Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is removing stars from a string. So in this question, we're given a string S which contains stars, that is an asterisk sign, and we can perform one operation on that string. We have to choose a star in the string S and we have to remove the closest non-star character to its left and also remove the star itself. And finally, after removing all the stars, we have to return the leftover string and it is guaranteed that the operation is possible in the test cases and there will be only one such unique answer in the output. So let's take a look at this example and see how this question can be solved. I've taken the same example string as, so this is the string given to us and we have to remove the stars. So whenever you remove a star, you remove its leftmost non-star character. You remove the star, so this star will also be removed. You remove the star, this will also be removed. You remove the star, this will also be removed and we get our final output as. So this will be our final output. So how are we going to do it? You can see that you are accessing a star and using that star you are trying to remove one of its character to its left. So you can use a stack data structure to solve this question. Please take a look at the valid parenthesis question. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. The working of the code is very similar to that. In fact, this is an easier problem than that question. If it didn't strike to you that you have to use a stack, don't worry. The more you practice stack related questions, you'll automatically know that when you have to use a stack. Now let's take a look how the stack will be built. So this is our stack. Now we start iterating from the starting index till the end. So the character we access first is L. We check if the character is a star or not. If it is not a star, we add it into the stack. Since L is not a star, so add it into the stack and move further. Now we are at E. E is not a star, so add it into the stack. Now we move further. We point at another E, so add it into the stack as it's not a star. Move further. It's a T, it's not a star, so add it into the stack. Move further. Now we are pointing to a star. So pop from the stack, which will remove the last entered character. Last entered character was T, so it will be removed from the stack and move further. It's a star again. So pop from the stack, which will remove the topmost element and move further. Now we are at C, it's not a star, so add it into the stack. Move further. We are at O, it's not a star, so add it into the stack. Move further, it's a D, it's not a star, so add it into the stack. Now we are pointing at a star, so remove the topmost element, D will be removed. Move further, we are pointing at E, so add it into the stack. And when you move further, you end the iteration, because you reach the end of the string. And now we have our output inside the stack. Now we use a while loop, and until stack is empty, we keep popping the element, and store it inside a string builder. You'll know why I'm using a string builder. So initially string builder is empty. So keep popping elements from the stack which will remove the topmost element until the stack is empty. So the topmost element is E. So pop it and remove it from the stack. So add it into the string builder and it will be removed from the stack. Now stack is not empty. So remove the topmost element. Topmost element is O. O will be added to the string builder and it will be removed from the stack. Now check if stack is empty. No, it's not empty. So add the topmost element to the string builder. Now check if stack is empty, no it's not empty. So remove the topmost element and add it into the string builder. So E will be added and it will be removed from the stack. Now if stack is empty, no, remove the topmost element. Topmost element is L and add it into the string builder. It will be removed from the stack. And now stack is empty. So we have our output inside the string builder. Now here you can see the expected output is this. We have our output but it is reversed. So we reverse the string builder using the reverse method. So after reversing the string builder, it will look like this. Now the characters inside the string builder and the expected output are matching. As the return type of the function is a string, so we convert this string builder into a string. So after converting the string builder into a string, it will look like this. And we have our final out output which is matching our expected output. So this will be returned as the output. Now let's write code implementing this approach and later we'll debug the code using the same example inside an IDE. Coming to the functions I've given us, this is the function name and this is the input string S which contains lowercase English letters and stars. And the return type is a string which means you have to return the leftover string after removing the stars. So let's start off by creating a stack. So this stack is going to contain characters. Now let's declare a final output. This is a string, right? First we'll store our output, that is the leftover string inside a string builder and later we'll convert that string builder into a string because the time complexity is better while appending things into a string builder. If you directly, you can also directly append the output to a string, but the time to append characters in a string is worse than that of a string builder. Now let's iterate through the input string S. Yes. 
So I'm converting the input string into a character array and then I'm declaring a character ch which will access one character at a time from left to right. Now I'm going to check if this character is a star or not. If it is not a star, it means it is a letter. So we'll add it into the stack. So if the character is not a star, which means it is a letter. So I'm pushing that character into the stack. And in the else block, it means it is a stack. So we will remove the topmost element from the stack using the pop method. So this for loop will happen for all the characters inside the string s. And finally, we have a result inside the stack. Now we have to build our string builder by removing elements from the stack. So I'll use a while loop. And until the stack gets empty, this while loop will run. So until there is an element inside the stack, you can also rewrite this like this. So until stack is not empty, I'll keep adding the elements from the stack into the string builder. So I'm going to use the append method on the string builder. And I'm going to pop the characters from the stack. Now we have our final output inside the string builder, but we have to return a string. So we have to reverse this string builder and convert it into a string. As the return type is a string, let's declare it. I'm going to name it result. So first I'm going to reverse the string builder. And then I'm going to convert this reversed string builder into a string using the toString method. Now finally we can return our result. Now let's run the code. Our test cases are running. Let's submit the code. There you have it, our solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n because we are using a for loop to iterate through the entire string. The space complexity is also O of n because we are using a stack to build our output. Now let's debug this code using this example inside an IDE. So I've taken the same function. So this is the remove stars function which I'm calling inside the main method. And I'm taking the same example one as the string. I've placed three breakpoints so that we can debug the code. So here you can see this is the input string. The stack is empty and we declared our output string builder. And first we are going to start with the first character L. So CH is now having L. So L is not a star. So L has been added into the stack. Here you can see at the zeroth index L has been added. Now CH is equal to E. E is also not a star. So push it into the stack. So here you can see at the first index E has been added into the stack and the size of the stack is 2. Now again the character is E. Now it's not a star so it will enter the if statement and E has been again added at the second index size of the stack is 3. Now the character is T. It is not a star so it will enter and it will be added inside the stack. So here you can see T has been added and the size of the stack is 4. Now it is a star. So it will skip the if statement and the else block will be executed. And the last element to enter the stack was t. So stack.pop will remove the last element because stack is last in first out. So t entered last, so it will come out first. So t will be removed. There you see stack size has decreased to 3 as t has been removed. Now the last element is e, so it will be removed. Now stack has two elements. Now it is a c, so c will be added into the stack. So there you can see C has been added. Now it is a O, so O will be added into the stack. Now it is a D, so D will be added into the stack. Now size of the stack is 5. Now it is a star again, so last entered character was D, so D will be removed from the stack. There you see D has been removed and the size has been reduced to 4. Now it is a E, so it is not a star, so it will be added into the stack. So E has been added into the stack. Now you come out of the for loop because you reach the end of the string. And here you can see our output is present inside the stack. Now until the stack is empty, the stack size is 5, until size becomes 0, we keep removing the last element from the stack. So here you can see last element was E, it has been removed and added into the string builder. Now O will be removed. Now C will be removed, now E will be removed, and now L will be removed, and the size is 0, the stack is empty. So we will come out of the while loop. And now we can observe the string builder has our answer in the reverse format. So we have to reverse the string builder and convert it into a string because the return type is a string for this function. So after reversing and converting into a string, result will ha now have our required output L, E, O, C, E. 
and this result string will be returned for this string which is being called inside the main method so here we are passing the s for this string and here it will print our required output so here you can see this is our final string which is matching our expected output that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video